یب نہ زہرا یا باس یب نہ زہرا یا باس یا باس یا باس ان اٹسلف از ا سائن دیٹ وی ہیو آلریڈی ریسیو گاڈز مرسی اینڈ دی ریوارڈ فار دیٹ از دی اسپیشل گریس اینڈ مرسی فلوز فرام اٹ اینڈ دیٹ از ایکسپریسڈ ان دی نیکسٹ فریز امام علیہ السلام سیز فاذا سالت دموعه على خده and then once the tears flow on his cheek فلو أن قطرة من دموعه سقطت في جهنم لأطفأت حرها حتى لا يوجد لها حر if from these tears a drop were to fall in the, in the ocean of the fire of hell that single drop is so powerful as to be able to extinguish the ocean of the fire of hell amazing if the fire of hell in other words is a manifestation of the collective sinfulness rebelliousness negligence arrogance defiance disobedience of the individual then it's these powerful tears that uproot the very inclinations in future the very memories of the past the very pleasures that were derived from sinning when these are uprooted from inside the heart there is no ocean of the fire of hell for that sinful behavior the uh, purity the power the charisma the perfection of these holy souls is so strong it has magnetically and spiritually pulled this individual within their orbit in such a way that this individual now is devoted is dedicated has sacrificed himself now to serve the holy ones it's a powerful experience that we have been invited to undergo during these holy nights we should not miss the opportunity it's comparable in other riwayat to what we would otherwise be doing on this night the eve of friday on thursday in dua kumail for example we say that uh to, towards the end when we reach the uh, crescendo and we are ending the dua ya <laughs> my uh, oh lord oh the one to whom i turn ارحم من لا يملك الا الرجاء او لورد هاف يور سبيشل غريس اند ميرسي اون مي از اي كم تو تو بريزنت ماي سيلف بيفور يو دو اي هاف اني ديدز باي ويتش اي كان كليم بليز ريوارد مي وات ماي ديدز ار ار ديفكتيف سام تايمز اي فيل تو براي اون تايم اور ايفن اف اي براي اي دونت براي ويز ذا بروبر كونسنتريشن اور ويز ذا بروبر كونديشنز اور اي هاف نوت address those requirements which could disqualify my prayer I, i i don't have any valid claim to to demand a reward for the good deeds that i've performed what do i how do i present in fact i have a host of deeds where i've defied and disobeyed you i'm fearful as i present myself but there's one thing i bring before you oh lord and that is my hopefulness in your mercy in your grace in your generosity in your unconditional love to accept anyone who admits to his slavehood and servitude and and lowliness before god irham man ra'su malihi ar-raja wa silahuhu al-buka and one who whose only weapon in this uh, eternal unending struggle Uh, against evil which tries to tempt me from within fr- through the devil through the dunya uh, through the culture that dominates around me I, i i am surrounded it's an eternal unending struggle and i need weapons and one of the most powerful weapons i have is tears <laughs> tears before before you oh lord of course when i recognize my own shortcomings and my own lowliness and my own humility before you and i break down that is one of the most powerful weapon because one of the biggest obstacles to reach god is arrogance uh, so i have sense so what's wrong with that the lack of 
remorse, the unwillingness to admit a mistake, the unreadiness to uh, want to change and reform, um, to bow down. This is the description of the kafir. You asked him to bow down before the truth, he refuses. This is Surah Mursalat. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقُرْآنَ لَا يَسْجُدُونَ In Surah Inshiqaq, Allah says, When the, wor the powerful verses from the majestic Lord are recited, if they were to go down on the mountains, the mountains would humble and crumble. But this individual doesn't make sajda when he hears the verses. He's defiant, he's arrogant. <coughs> the biggest obstacle, arrogance. And therefore, the biggest weapon to get close to God, tears. And therefore, the riwayah, ma min shay'in. There is no way we can quantify and measure the reward for crying. Forget about crying for Ahlul Bayt. Crying before God. Ma min shay'in illa walahu kaylun wa wazn illa dumu'. Everything has. Uh, a scale by which you can measure them, except for this light drop of tears. Uh, it's heavier than everything you can imagine. <laughs> a, a few drops of these tears can extinguish whole oceans of fire. لو أن باكيا بكى في أمة if if a community, if a if a city, if a country has only a few people, or no one person, who in the darkness of the night, out of true sincerity, weeps before the Lord, it's because of this individual that Allah can have mercy on others in the community. <coughs> we should not therefore take this ritual of commemoration lightly it's a profound experience that brings us closer to the perfect souls in fact to the all perfect being and one of the most powerful easiest shortest ways and most profound ways to get to god is to weep before god and to weep for the holy souls for the sacrifice in karbala the movement of karbala because it was led by an imam and because the imam is the manifestation of God's highest knowledge and power and mercy and grace and wisdom and all the other beautiful names in as much as the Quran also is a manifestation one is a written word the other one is a living being therefore every movement and every saying and every step that is taken by the ma'soom imam is a reflection and an application and an implementation of the teachings of the Quran. And therefore notice when the decision was made by Imam alayhi salam to begin the journey from Medina to proceed to Mecca on departure, he recites the verses of the Quran. On arrival in Mecca, he recites the verses of the Quran. D at the departure time, he leaves behind a wasiya, which is also based uh, on the Quran. This uh, wasiya is an interesting document, which I would like to uh, pause and consider briefly. In the meeting that he has with Ibn al Hanafiya, his half brother, <coughs> Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, he leaves behind with him uh, towards the end a document, the wasiya, which is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hadha ma awsa bihi al Husayn ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib ila akhihi Muhammad al Ma'ruf ibn al Hanafiya. This is a wasiya that I leave behind with my brother Muhammad. Anna al Husayn yashhad. Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Hussein testifies that there is no deity and there is no being worthy of worship other than Allah 
There is no one Hussein is going to bow down to other than Allah, to hope in other than Allah, to fear from other than Allah, to ask from other than Allah, to obey other than Allah, to please, to praise, to love, to die for other than Allah. This is Hussein's testimony. وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I also testify that Muhammad is his absolute exclusive servant. He doesn't obey anything other than God. And therefore he is his last and greatest messenger. جَاءَ بِالْحَقِّ مِنْ عِنْدِ الْحَقِّ From the absolute truth, he gained the highest proximity possible for any human being. And therefore he brought the most comprehensive and therefore the most lasting truth from this Lord. And وَأَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ وَالنَّارَ حَقٌّ وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ And I also believe the heaven and hell are true. It's a promise from God that life after death and the hour, the appointed hour shall come. Absolutely, there is no doubt in it. And Allah definitely will raise the dead from the graves. Statement of beliefs, Tawheed, Qiyamah, Nubuwa. It's mustahab to make a wasiyah. But in the uh, case of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, there is a powerful reason why this had to be made not privately. That could have been left behind uh, privately and it not, it's not necessary they should reach us but he makes statements in this wasiya which are of a public nature meaning that there is the possibility that the motive for my movement will be distorted will be misinterpreted there will be allegations made that um, I was a rebel against the system and therefore my movement had to be arrested and I had to be eliminated. In order to, to preclude this possible misinterpretation, Imam makes this uh, wasiyya. In fact, <coughs> on the day of Ashura, at one point, one of the uh, opponents from the camp of Ibn Sa'd, he attempts to distort the purpose when the uh, when the combat begins when the companions courageously and bravely and fearlessly attack and the enemy escape and the enemy has to flee at that time Ibn Sa'ad says you can't face these warriors face to face they're just too brave for you you must use other means uh, why don't you pelt them with stones for example at that time, one of them, Amr bin Hajjaj, he comes near the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He says, Ya Ahl al-Kufa, all the Kufans who have come out in support of Hussein, Alzimu ta'atakum wa jama'atakum. There is a ruler, there's a Khalifa, meaning Yazid has been appointed, and he has appointed a governor in, in Kufa, Ibn Ziyad. Why are you opposing? Why are you causing chaos, disunity, corruption in the Ummah? لا ترتابوا في قتل من مرق من الدين وخالف الإمام. The Amir al-Mu'minin and the Imam al-Muslimin is Yazid. Don't you ever doubt about the person who opposes and rebels against the Amir al-Mu'minin that he is an opponent of truth and of the faith. Already therefore Imam Hussain alayhi salam is being branded as a rebel who needs to be eliminated. Imam Hussain alayhi salam comes and confronts him. Ya ibn al-Hajjaj, a'alayya tuharridu nasa <laughs> You're trying to instigate my own people against me. Anahnu marakna min ad-deen wa antum thabattum alayhi You're trying to imply that we have rebelled and, and, and you are firm on the truth and the faith. Wallahi, lata'lamunna. أَيُّنَا الْمَارِقِ مِنَ الدِّينِ وَمَنْ هُوَ أَوْلَى بِصِلِيِّ النَّارِ I swear you will soon come to know who is the true rebel and who is the one who deserves to go to the fire of hell. The truth is obvious. You're trying to obfuscate and you're trying to obscure 
obvious facts and then and then the combat uh, begins so imam hussein alayhi salam's declaration of his basic faith was a necessary step not only because it's mustahab to do so but because in those political circumstances it was necessary to do so in fact the quran recommends that we should we should make efforts to make a wasiya in surah uh, baqarah chapter 2 ayah number 180 allah describes a scenario where somebody is about to die the signs of death have appeared death is impending and unavoidable kutiba alaykum idha hadara ahadakum al mawtu in taraka khayran al wasiya when the time of death appears and you have left behind some estate some property some legacy and if it is of a uh, sizable quantity and amount then it is prescribed on you it's incumbent on you to make a wasiyah wasiyah ordinarily is mustahab if we don't have anything of a large amount mustahab but if we have some unfinished work some salah some psalm some wajib act which had to be done which for some reason wasn't done there's a qada that has to be paid for example or somebody's dues that have to be paid you've taken a loan or you've borrowed a property or somebody has entrusted you with something which doesn't belong to you then it is wajib to inform your heirs that this property doesn't belong to me it has to be returned in Allah ya'murukum an tu'addul amanati ila ahliha Allah instructs you whenever you have an amana you must make sure that it's returned back to its owner <coughs> You've taken a loan, it has to be repaid. If the time has not yet matured for you to pay back, and if the creditor and the lender doesn't demand it before your death, and let's say the time is some somewhere after your death, then you must make a wasiyah, it's wajib. You fail to do so, there are situations where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Ali when he came to know. The deceased had some haqqul nas which has not been paid for or he has made no arrangements for the payment to be done that the prophet refuses to come and to pray salatul mayyit for that individual it's that serious so wasiyah becomes wajib in some cases in some other cases it's mustahab so if you leave behind khair uh, incidentally the uh, property here in this ayah is referred to as khair in taraka khayran al wasiyah Malud dunya is khair according to the Quran. It's good to seek the wealth of the dunya. It all depends, of course, how you do it. You seek it in the halal way, and you save it in a halal way, and you spend it in a halal way, and you pay your wajib dues, and you attend to your relatives and the community, and you invest in projects whose returns come back to the community and you don't invest let's say your extra earnings in in haram or dubious uh, projects no problem this is khair this is a means to get closer to god this is a means to advance the community and the society economically and to bring progress wonderful if you have left behind such a khair wasiya is mandatory للوالدين والأقربين بالمعروف The law of earth and inheritance will apply to your parents, to your children, and to your spouse in the first category and then to other members. If none of them are alive, then to members of the second and the third categories, which I mentioned in Surah Nisa. But if the allocation by the Sharia, the share, the percentage, is not enough because of the unique circumstances of your parents or of your relatives then also it is recommended if not wajib depending on the circumstances to make specific wasiya that in addition to the share that they will receive from the two-thirds of your estate property from your one-third over which you have jurisdiction you allocate something extra for your parents for your relatives or for your friends or for whoever or for some good cause. 
bil ma'roof of course that which is dictated by the intellect and by the convention and that which is appropriate haqqan ala al muttaqin and this is a duty of the pious people so what is wajib is, is on every muslim whenever there is some wajib act to be performed but in addition to that for the pious people they sh it's must have to make this wasiyah in fact the riwayah says that um, you are not a true muslim if you go to sleep and you don't make a wasiyah la yanbaghi limri'in muslimin an yabita illa wa wasiyatuhu tahta ra'si it does not behoove and it's not proper for a true muslim to go to sleep at night but that his wasiyah should be ready well, who's got a guarantee that he's going to wake up tomorrow we have got unfinished work to be done we must bequeath or we must request others to carry out those duties in our absence man mata bighayri wasiyah another riwayah says mata mitatan jahiliya then you have died the death of jahiliya <coughs> or another riwayah says that man lam yusi inda mawtihi li dhawi qarabatih mimman la yarith faqad khatama amalahu bima'siya it's sinful it's sinful to die and not make wasiyah especially if you know amongst your friends your community or your relatives somebody who needs assistance and you've got enough which Allah has blessed you with and you neglect them and you forget them so Imam Hussain alayhi salam um, leaves behind a wasiyah a wasiyah which starts with a statement of faith wasiyah as a statement of faith is also reported from the prophets um, Prophet Ibrahim for example Prophet Ya'qub in Surah in Surah Baqarah uh, chapter 2 ayah number 132 Allah describes the deathbed scenario of the Abrahamic prophets wa biha Ibrahimu banihi wa Ya'qubu and remember the time when wasiyah was made by Prophet Ibrahim to his sons and also Ya'qub, especially Ya'qub, that's Israel, and the children of Ya'qub, the Bani Israel. Ya Bani Ya, O my sons, Inna Allah astafa lakum ad-deena. Allah has blessed you. We out here in the desert, out here in, with our own little minds, we thought we knew the best, but Allah has shown us the right path. It's a great, chosen, preferred lifestyle. Istafa lakum ad-deena fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun so make sure you 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 live up with that faith till you die make sure you don't die but that you're a muslim aha uh -huh. so the wasiyah become becomes an Im are you sure about this <laughs> i'm sorry um so you make sure that the wasiyah that is made from the parents as they leave the world is that they make sure that their children receive the right legacy when they die they die as Muslims it's a major concern for for a true believer that what he knows now to be true that this true faith shall continue with him till the end and that he should not die but that he is a Muslim so for example in Surah Ali Imran this concern is shown by the Ulul Albab وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ O oh Allah make us die so that we are we are pious and we are virtuous or for example the magicians in the time of Fir'aun when they saw the miracle of Prophet Musa um, this is the prayer they made chapter 7 ayah 126 that O oh Lord we pray to you that we die as Muslims ayah 126 
when the magicians declared their faith in Musa, <coughs> Pharaoh said, how dare, who gave you the permission to accept Musa without asking me? <coughs> I shall punish you, I shall arrest you, all of you, all you magicians. You've all conspired with Musa against me. Now I've realized, Pharaoh says. I'm going to arrest you, and I'm going to torture you, I'm going to punish you. The worst punishment I can imagine. I'm going to cut off your right hand and your left leg. Or vice versa. But that's the worst punishment that he could inflict. In response, the magician said, Sir, we made a mistake. Uh, we were overtaken by uh, the situation. We're sorry. Uh, you are our Lord. You tell us what to believe in, and we'll accept but that's not what the magicians did. The magicians told Pharaoh, sorry, you have no control over our souls. The only thing you can do is take our body, take it away, chop it up. <laughs> one hand, one leg, no. Take both hands, take both legs. But you can't touch our soul. You can't touch our spirit. Our soul has seen the truth. It has accepted the truth. It is ready to live by the truth and is ready to die for the truth. Oh Lord, our prayer to you is, Rabbana, uh, ayah number 126. Afrid oh Lord, give us the sabr to be able to resist against this tyrant and this dictator. Give us a little sabr to stand up to him. No, 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 not a little sabr. Afrid, pour, fill up our hearts with all the possible sabr to face this greatest of the tyrants with all the possible forces that he can muster against us we need all the possible sabr to resist him and we can do it we believe in you O lord and we know you will give us the strength afrigh alayna sabra wa tawaffana muslimin our faith is shaking possibly give us the strength to die as muslims this wasiyah, therefore, don't die but that you're a Muslim, is exactly what Imam Hussain a.s. does right in the beginning. He's going to face challenges, tremendous challenges, to himself, to his family, to his friends, to his followers. Is it going to be easy? Well, not necessarily. But with this sabr, with this firmness and determination, oh yes, if the magicians could do it, Imam Hussain definitely would be able to do it. But not everybody is able to do it. There are people who at the end of their lives fail to say, La ilaha illallah. In Surah Yasin, Allah says that there are some people who will want to say something, but they cannot. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم Today we shall seal their mouths. It's their hands and their feet that will speak. It's their true character that will speak. At the end of your life, if you want to say, La ilaha illallah, but throughout your life, you never believed in it, at the end, it will be difficult to say so. So this wasiyah is a very important step. <coughs> Imam Hussain alayhi salam continues in that wasiyah, and then uh, he, tells Ibn, uh, he tells Ibn al Hanafiya that I, my movement is not for the purpose of gaining power or to spread chaos or corruption or disunity in the ummah. My purpose is to establish virtue in society. My purpose is to remove vices from society. My purpose is to reform the society. I want to restore and reaffirm the lifestyle and the seerah of my grandfather which has been abandoned, which has been violated. <coughs> Abu Darda, he came to Muawiyah. He saw Muawiyah drinking from a golden and a silver vessel. Abu Darda said, I heard the Prophet. He says that if anybody drinks from a golden or a silver vessel, then Allah will make fire flow in his belly. Muawiyah says, Amma ana fala ara ba'sa. Yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't think so. There's anything wrong. Abu Darda says, wait a minute. I just told you what the Prophet has said. And, and you just 
rejecting that and you're giving me your interpretation and your view sorry he stands up he says i don't want to live in a land where you are living and he walks out this is a simple example but the list of violations open defiant violations by muawiyah and subsequently therefore yazid were such that even the silent uh, cowardly if i can name them companions were shocked sometimes Maududi is a Sunni scholar, Abu al-A'la Maududi, a Pakistani scholar who's written a book, Khilafat or Mulukiyat, how Khilafat was changed into an emperorship, a dynasty, a family dynasty. In that he says the problems with Muawiyah, that the innovations that Muawiyah introduced into the Sharia were that number one, as far as power was, in, in several areas, changes were made. Imam is saying, I'm making an uprising to restore the original teachings. Because there were a lot of deviations and innovations. Look at this list. In the area of power and politics, in the area of economics, in the area of the judiciary, in the area of the culture, in the area of the worship lifestyle of the Prophet. In all these areas, changes were made. And life was being returned back to the Jahiliya period the process of appointing someone to power. How should the government be run? Whether there should be consultation like the previous Khulafa or not. Uh, in, in the economic area, public treasury is dealt as if it's a family bank account. You can use it for your personal uh, interest. In the judiciary, no, the judge cannot make a rule against a judgment against the, uh, the, the Khalifa. In the cultural area, no freedom anymore to anyone to challenge the Khalifa if he makes a wrong statement. Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa, had a son, Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman opposed Muawiyah. So Muawiyah opposed Muawiyah's appointment of Yazid as, his, as the next Khalifa. So he sends 100,000 dirhams to pacify him. Abu Bakr son Abdul Rahman says La abi I will not sell my faith for the sake of finances I don't want your money so Marwan bin Hakam who was the who was the governor in Medina before Walid bin Utbah in the khutbah in the masjid he announces in Amir al Mu'minin uh, Muawiyah he has decided what's best for you the ummah and his heart is very sincere for you. Istakhlafa ibnahu Yazid. He has made the Khalifa for you, Yazid, for the, for, for the future. In between the khutbah, Abdul Rahman stands up. He says, Kathibta wallah wa kathiba mu'awiyah. You, you, you people are liars. <laughs> You're telling us this is the best for our interest and our welfare? You are a liar and Muawiyah is a liar. This is not the welfare that you are claiming for the Ummah of the Prophet. What you want to do is convert this into a family dynasty. Once one emperor dies, another emperor comes in his place. This is not Khilafah, I'm sorry. This is a family dynasty that you are erecting. Immediately the forces were to arrest him. Abdul Rahman went to his sister, Bi Aisha. Bi Aisha was respected as Ummul Mu'mineen. Nobody touched Abdul Rahman. But Muawiyah later on threatened, Wallahi hamam tu an aqtulak. I swear I'm, I'm plotting to get rid of you. History records Abdul Rahman was found dead. Maududi says, the Khilafah was converted into Mulukiyah. Nobody dared challenge the decisions that were being made, even if they were against the Sharia. Imam Hussain says, I make an uprising to restore the Sunnah of the Prophet. <coughs> Excuse me. And the final area where he mentions changes that were made was in the worship lifestyle of the Prophet. For example, the Salatul Eid, the Khutbah is normally after the Salah. Muawiyah had a problem. People in opposition, when he came to lead the prayers, 
they would not wait for the khutbah after the salah. So he, he, he readjusted. Instead of making a khutbah after the salah, he kept the khutbah before the salah. So people had to listen to him just to get the salah. Or uh, during the khutbah, because he was, uh, he was gluttonous, he was heavy in his body, it was difficult for him to stand for very long. So he says, excuse me, uh, I've got a knee problem. My khutbah is going to be seated on the mimbar. I'm going to sit on the mimbar and deliver the khutbah. There was excuses, but these were the open bid'ah that he started introducing from the ibadah to the economic area to the judiciary to the way power was administered and executed. So Imam Hussain al declares the purpose of his movement is to restore the sunnah of the Prophet. And finally, he ends his wasiyah by saying that, وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبِ I'll make my best efforts to try to restore, but strength and success is only from Allah. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ I depend on him for strength. And I will always turn back to him if in case there are any shortfalls, any shortcomings, repentance and seeking forgiveness will be always back, returning back to God. These are exact wordings again from the Quran, Surah Hud, chapter 11, ayah 88, where Allah quotes Prophet Shu'aib at the final stage of confrontation with his ummah, with his people, when they refuse to accept him. He says, I've delivered the message. I've explained the truth. I've shown you the miracles. You reject me, I'm going to continue my efforts. I will depend on God for strength. And in case if there are any failures or weaknesses, I will keep on turning back to him to ask for more help. I stop here in my discussion of the importance of this wasiyya, which is the Quranic-based principle which Imam Ali Salam applied. Imam departed from Medina towards the end of Rajab. On the 3rd of Sha'ban, on his birthday, he arrives in Mecca. He stays in Mecca till the 8th of Dhul Hajjah. During this time period, he meets several individuals. Some of them are ordinary people, but some of them are extraordinary individuals in the Ummah. One of them is Abdullah bin Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab. And the other one is Abdullah bin Abbas, the cousin of Imam Ali alayhi salam. <coughs> I would like to quote for you the exchange that takes place between these extraordinary individuals and Imam Hussain because it characterizes the motive and the method of this movement. Abdullah bin Umar tells Imam salam, Ya Aba Abdullah, Rahimakallah, Ittaqillah, Alladhi ilayhi ma'aduk. O oh, Abu Abdullah, may Allah have special grace and mercy on you. Have the fear of God in your heart. All of us are going to return back to him. You know Bani Umayyah, and you know the leaders of Bani Umayyah. They're not going to abandon you. They're going to search you. They're going to hunt you. They're going to arrest you. They're going to kill you. So I would advise you, don't be confrontational. Be compromising. Be silent. Be accept. Make salah. Don't make war. Just like oh, all the people, that's what they're going to do. It's always been happening all these years. For 20 years, Muawiyah was in power. And now, uh, sorry, for 10 years, Muawiyah was in power after Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And 10 years during your time. Now, uh, as the people submitted to him then, they will submit to Yazid. Why don't you also accept? Otherwise, you'll be killed. Because I heard the Prophet. Omar's son says, I heard the Prophet. Inna al Husayna maqtool. Hussein will be killed one day. وَلَئِنْ قَتَلُوهُ وَخَذَلُوهُ وَلَنْ يَنْصُرُوهُ لَيَخْذُلُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ But I also heard the Prophet, he said that if ever this Ummah goes and kills Hussein and abandons him and does not help him, Allah will punish this Ummah. So my advice to you is don't expose yourself to the danger. You'll be killed. These people are ruthless. Uh, that's the best course of action. 
لعل الله أن يحكم بينك وبين القوم الظالمين Allah will judge between you and them your intention is sincere you, 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 you're not happy with what, what, what they're doing that's enough Imam Hussain alayhi salam looks at Ibn Umar and he says Ya Aba Abd al-Rahman Ubayi'u Yazid wa adkhulu fi sulhih You are telling me to make uh, sulh with Yazid with all his open defiant violations of the Sharia وَقَدْ قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِ فِيهِ وَفِي أَبِيهِ مَا قَالْ And you know what my grandfather has said about him and about his father. You expect me to keep silent? That's a very strange proposal, Ibn Umar. Ibn Abbas was sitting there. Ibn Abbas says, صَدَقْتَ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ Yes, Ma Hussein is right on this. What the Prophet has said about Yazid and about Muawiyah has left no place for compromise. مَا لِي وَلِي يَزِيد لَا بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِي يَزِيد إِنَّهُ يَقْتُلُ وَلَدِي وَوَلَدِي إِبْنَتِي الْحُسَيْنِ The Prophet has predicted, yes, the Bani Umayyah will be ruthless. Amongst them, it will be Yazid who will take this merciless action. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ And I swear by God, Ibn Abbas quotes the Prophet, that whosoever does this and the Ummah allows it to happen, Allah will punish that Ummah. Ibn Abbas quotes this hadith and then he weeps because he now suddenly realizes the events are changing and what the Prophet spoke is suddenly beginning to appear to be true. This man sitting in front of us, we know him. He's not a person who's going to bow down. And Yazid, we know his character. What the Prophet predicted is about to happen. We're going to lose this man. Imam Hussain alayhi salam also weeps because now they realize the dhulm that is going to take place. And then Imam Hussain looks at Ibn Abbas. He says, Ibn Abbas, Ta'lamu anni ibnatu, ana ibnu binti Rasulillah. Do you know my status, Ibn Abbas? I am the son of the daughter of the Prophet. Ibn Abbas suddenly realizes, wait a minute, I just quoted a hadith, and the hadith said that if Hussein is killed and nobody helps him, then there is punishment for this ummah. Uh, so Ibn Abbas says, Naam, Naam, yes, I know you are the son of the daughter of the Prophet. Na'lamu anna ma fi dunya ahadun huwa ibn binti Rasulillah ghayruk. There is no one alive today as a son of the daughter of the Prophet other than you. We know that. And I also know anna nasraka la fardun ala hadhi al ummah. And I know to assist you and to support you and to die in the cause that you have taken up is as much wajib and compulsory as is salah and zakat. Meaning that what Ibn Umar is suggesting, keep silent and compromise and make salah and we continue with our salat and zakat. That's not enough. This is also wajib. So Imam Hussain alayhi salam says, Ibn Abbas, if you've realized this, then do you blame me for my stance? Ibn Abbas, ما تقول في قوم أخرجوا ابن بنت رسول الله من داره وقراره. What what do you say about this ummah? There are some evil leaders, and then there's a silent majority. They have uprooted me from my home, from the proximity of the Prophet من حرم رسوله ومن مجاورة قبره. I used to spend a peaceful life. Educating people, guiding people, helping people in Medina. And they have expelled me from there. They have forced me to take a stance. And they've put me into a situation now that my family is terrified. We've got no security. What type of society is this? Ibn Abbas. That a person who wants to be good and virtuous and God-fearing, he is terrified. And if you want the dunya, and if you want to follow the devil, and if you want to enjoy the lowly animal pleasures of the world, oh, the world is open for you. What type of world is this? Ibn Abbas. Now they're hunting me, they want to arrest me, and they want to kill me. And I swear I've not done anything to deserve to be killed. I've not apostatized. I've not abandoned the faith. 
I've not taken anyone as partner to God. I've not taken any partnership with the kafir, for example. I've not introduced any new things in the deen. Where, where is the justification, Ibn Abbas, for hunting me down and wanting to kill me? Imam Hussain alayhi salam continues. Uh, Ibn Abbas realizes absolutely what's happening is terrible. He quotes two verses from the Quran. Verses in the Quran which talk about the munafiq. The munafiq, Allah says there are some people who pray, but in their, they, they pray as if it's a burden. وَقَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ وَهُمْ كُسَالًا It's there in Surah Tawbah. كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ These people in their hearts they've rejected God. In their hearts they've rejected the Prophet. But outwardly they claim to be Muslims. No. خَلِيفَةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ But inside their hearts they're kafir. Ibn Abbas affirms Imam Hussein alayhi salam's assessment of the Ummah. Ibn Abbas then says, On such a people may Allah's wrath and displeasure descend. Truly you are honorable. But, O oh Hussein, be assured, Allah will not let the zalim go unpunished. Wa ana ashhad, and O oh Hussein, I testify, Ibn Abbas says, Man raghiba an mujawaratik, fama lahu min khalaq. Whoever refuses to help you, Allah will punish him. I testify to that. Imam Hussain alayhi salam says, well, if you know all these things, Allahumma ishad. Yes, oh Allah testify to what Ibn Abbas is testifying to. That whoever knows who I am and what I stand for, and yet you don't want to help me, then this ummah is going to be punished. Ibn Abbas, where do you stand? In other words. So Ibn Abbas Tells Imam Hussein, Ju'iltu fidaka yabna binti Rasulillah ka'annaka turidu minni an ansurak. You expect me to come and join you, don't you, O oh, the son of the daughter of the Prophet? Wallahi, wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu, in darabtu bayna yadayka hatta, in khala' ma fi kaffi, lama kuntu mimman awfa min haqqika ushra al ushr. I admit, he tells Imam Hussein, these are some of the sentiments we hear on the eve of Ashura. Ibn Abbas tells him in Mecca, I testify, I swear, this sword that I'm carrying, if I fight in your cause, and if I use my maximum efforts, I know still I've not paid even a tenth of a tenth of the duty that is on my neck to serve you. I'm ready, I'm ready to serve you with everything I have. Murni, tell me what should I do? At this stage, Ibn Umar intervenes. Wait, 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 you're going too fast. Wait. I, I, I'll t talk about that a bit later on some other occasion. I'll skip forward to the conclusion. Imam Hussein tells Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, you are from our family. We, we know your past. You've always been good hearted, you've always given good counsel and advice to my father. I would advise you, go back to Medina. فَمْضِي إِلَى الْمَدِينَ fi حِفْظِ اللَّهِ May Allah protect you. But keep on informing us what is happening in Medina. Imam Hussain alayhi salam had strategic people. Incidentally, the father of Ibn Abbas played the same role. Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib stayed back in Mecca. The Prophet was in Medina. It was towards the end, before the eighth year of Hijrah, before Fath Mecca that Abbas, uh, the uncle of the Prophet, migrated. So he was the spy for the Prophet in Mecca. Ibn Abbas is to be the spy of Imam Hussein alayhi salam back. Inni muqeemun fi al haram. But Ibn Abbas, I will remain. So long as the people here come and show respect and recognize my status and are ready to listen to me and are ready to be guided by me and are ready to then support me, I will stay here. So long as the situation is safe and it allows me to carry out my mission. But if they turn their backs towards me, they don't want to listen to me, 
or they do want to listen to me, but they're not ready to sacrifice anymore. In fact, they're ready to keep silent. In fact, they're ready to become partners with the evil criminals against me. At that time, istabdaltu bihim ghayrahum. I shall leave this place and look for other better companions. Ista'asamtu bi kalimati Ibrahim. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I take refuge in the same dua and the wordings as that of Ibrahim. Ibrahim, when he was taken on the catapult and was being hurled into the fire, his one dua was, even when Jibreel came and said, if you want any help, I'm ready. His one dua was, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. For me, God is sufficient. Whether the ummah wants to listen to me or not, whether they want to come with me or not, whether they want to give me their time and their energy and their possessions and their lives or not, but me and God against the evil world, all alone, they want to make the biggest fire possible in the time of Ibrahim, they did it. They want to create the biggest of the fires in our times, let them do it. But Ibrahim was th hurled into the fire and the fire turned out to be ya nar kuni bardan wa salama with this dua with this belief in god between me and yazid there is god before yazid and his army and his swords and his stones and whatever he has before that can reach me there is god and i trust that god and i submit to that god and i'm ready to die for that god and therefore every sword and every stone and every pain, to you it's painful. To Ibrahim, it was a garden. To me, it's sweet. You can't defeat this man. Yazid lost the battle, not in Karbala. He lost the day Imam Hussein walked out from that palace. Assalamu alaikum, ya Aba Abdullah. Wa ala al arwah allati hallat bi finaik wa anakhat bi rahlik. عليكم منا جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقينا وبقي الليل والنهار يا حسين يبنى الزهراء يا عباس يبنى الزهراء يا عباس يا عباس يا عباس يا عباس يا عباس غازي علم ترى موجا رهي غا غازي علم ترى موجا رهي غا قلبي علم ترى موجا رها ہے तेरा ऊंचा रहा है आज भी है और कल भी रहेगा गाजी अलम तेरा ऊंचा रहेगा गाजी अलम तेरा ऊंचा रहेगा